Okay, so this is another example of how to do a higher order derivatives problem. The question is, find the third derivative of f at x equals square root of x plus 10 over x cubed minus e to the 2x plus sine x. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite f of x so that we can see the powers a little more clearly. So for the first term, it's square root of x, and we know that square root of x can also be written as x to the power of a half. For the second term, it's 10 over x cubed, and 1 over x cubed can also be written as x to the power of negative 3. So this term is going to change to 10 times x to the power of negative 3, and then the last two terms can stay the same. Okay, so now we can start taking our first derivative. So for the first term, we have x to the power of a half. So when we're taking the derivative, we bring that power down, so we have a half, and then minus 1 from the power. So we have x to the power of negative a half. So for this next term, we have 10 times x to the power of negative 3. You have to be careful because when you're multiplying the 10 by negative 3, you're going to change the sign out front. So this is actually going to be minus 30 x to the power of negative 4, because when you minus 1 from negative 3, you're going to get negative 4. For the next term, when we take the derivative of e to the 2x, we actually have to use chain rule. So when using chain rule, what you have to do is multiply derivative of the, the whole function by the derivative of the inner function. The inner function here is 2x. So this is going the sign is going so the sign is going to stay the same. It's going to be minus, and you're going to have e to the 2x, and then multiply e to the 2x by the inner derivative. So it's going to be the derivative of 2x, which is just 2. For the last term, we have sine x, and we know that derivative of sine x is just cos x, so we can put this as plus cos x. So now we can start with the second derivative. So when taking the second derivative, you have to be careful because since you have negative powers, the signs are going to change. So for this first term, we have a half times negative a half, which is negative a quarter, and then x to the power of negative 3 over 2, because negative a half minus 1 is negative 3 over 2. For the next term, we have negative 30 times negative 4, which is positive 120 times x to the power of negative 5. So for the third term, we have to use chain rule again. So we have 2 times e to the power of 2x multiplied by the derivative of the inner function, which is 2x, so the derivative is 2. So you're going to multiply that 2 by this 2. So you're going to get minus 4 times e to the 2x. And for the last term, be careful because the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. So this is going to turn into a minus sine x. So now we can start to take the third derivative. This is our last derivative that we need to take because we're finding the third derivative of f of x. So for the first term, we have negative a quarter times negative 3 over 2, which is positive 3 over 8, and then multiplied by x to the power of negative 5 over 2, because negative 3 over 2 minus 1 is negative 5 over 2. So for the next term, we have 120 times negative 5, so that's going to be minus 600 x to the power of negative 6. So for the third term, we have to do chain rule again. So we have 4e to the 2x, which is multiplied by the derivative of 2x. So that's going to turn into 8e to the 2x. And for this last term, the derivative of sine x is cos x. So the sine will stay the same, and it'll be minus cos x. So this is your third derivative of f of x.